Imagine a world where switching your operating system isn't just a technical decision, but a social shift, a cultural moment in computing history. Picture millions of users, developers, students, creators, and even corporations collectively moving toward a new home in the Linux ecosystem. That might sound dramatic, but in 2026, we could very well be on the brink of such a transition. Today, I want to explore the idea of the next big Linux, owes the distribution that breaks out of niche communities, overcomes fragmentation, and becomes the go-to choice for an incredibly wide range of users. This isn't just about a Linux distro with shiny graphics or fancy marketing. This is about a platform that redefines usability, performance, compatibility, and the very perception of what Linux can be for the general public. Let's begin. For decades, Linux has been split across thousands of distributions. There are distros for programmers, distros for designers, distros for gamers, distros for servers, distros that run on ancient machines and everything in between. What's remarkable is that despite this diversity, none of them have ever truly unified the desktop market the way Windows or Mac OS has. Many have tried and several have come close, but each prioritizes a certain audience. Ubuntu made Linux mainstream in the 2010s pop. Underscore OS became a favorite for creators and gamers, Fedora pushed cutting-edge tech, and Debian remained a bedrock of stability. But today Linux is still a mosaic of specialized choices. The big question for 2026 is, which distro, if any, will finally bring all these threads together? Let's imagine a future where one distro becomes not just popular, but ubiquitous a system that's easy enough for first-time users switching from Windows. Powerful enough for developers, sleek enough for designers, and robust enough for enterprise use. What would that look like? What would it need to achieve? And more importantly, why now? To answer these questions, we have to look at the trajectories of Linux adoption over the past decade. The biggest growth in Linux usage hasn't come from desktops. It's come from cloud servers, supercomputers, embedded systems, Android devices, Chromebooks, IoT devices, and more. On desktops, Linux usage has hovered around a few percent of the market for years. But that doesn't mean it hasn't been gaining traction. In fact, the Linux ecosystem has matured in ways that make a breaking point possible. The key factors are compatibility, ease of use, performance, driver support, and community, but also something more subtle, perception. Perception shapes adoption. Most people think of Linux as four techies, something you install in a virtual machine or on a spare laptop, not something you would confidently run as your primary computer. That mindset exists because historically, Linux required deep technical knowledge. You had to manage drivers yourself, troubleshoot conflicts, understand the command line for everyday tasks, and deal with package managers that were confusing to new users. While enthusiasts cherished this level of control, it became a barrier for mainstream adoption. Fast forward to 2026, the landscape has shifted. Hardware manufacturers are finally taking Linux seriously. Major GPU brands provide polished drivers. Printers, scanners, webcams, and W adapters, once infamous for poor Linux support, now work out of the box without tinkering. And that's not by accident. Linux is the backbone of cloud computing. Corporations rely on it. Governments depend on it. Developers build on it every day. When organizations invest in Linux at scale, they push manufacturers to create better support. At the same time, the software ecosystem has matured. Thousands of applications that were once exclusive to Windows and Mac OS now have Linux versions or equivalents that match feature for feature. Even industry staples in audio production, video editing, design, and gaming are no longer missing from Linux. Tools once considered Windows only now run natively thanks not only to open source ports, but also to compatibility layers and containerization technologies. Game studios ship Linux builds. Creative suites are being rewritten or adapted with Linux first in mind. But beyond drivers and apps, what really matters for an OS to become massive is the user experience. End users crave simplicity, an OS that just works, that doesn't require constant updates or manual configuration. A system that is elegant, intuitive, and forgiving. Which brings us to the qualities that will define the distro that might take over in 2026. First, installation must be seamless. No confusing partitions, no cryptic options. An installer that detects hardware, sets up dual boot safely if needed, and transfers user preferences from old systems painlessly. Too many Linux installations trip up new users before they even log in. Second, 
updates should be reliable and non-disruptive. Linux distributions are well known for frequent updates, but the experience varies widely. If users constantly encounter bugs or regressions after updates, enthusiasm fades fast. The next big distro will offer updates that are tested rigorously, rolled out intelligently, and reversible without breaking the system. Third, software distribution must be centralized and trustworthy. The era of conflicting package formats, Deb RPM, Snap, Flatpak, AppImage tends to confuse users. While container formats have advantages, users don't want to think about it. The ideal distro will unify software distribution in a way that makes finding, installing, updating, and removing apps intuitive and consistent. Fourth, performance must be exceptional. People want their computers to feel responsive. Whether on cutting-edge hardware or older laptops, the next big Linux OS will be tuned to be fast, efficient, and adaptive. Users should feel they're getting every bit of power from their machine without sacrificing stability. Fifth, Integration with modern workflows is essential. Cloud services, mobile devices, collaboration tools, AI assistance users expect these to work smoothly. The distro of 2026 shouldn't just be a computer OS. It should be a gateway to a connected digital life. And finally, community and support matter. People choose operating systems because they feel supported. Whether through official documentation, forums, localized help, or third-party tutorials users want to feel they belong in the ecosystem, not stranded. Now the next question. Which distro fits this vision? And what makes it poised to become the definitive choice for 2026? There are a few contenders, but one, in particular, is generating serious buzz in the Linux world. It's not just because it's innovative or beautifully designed. It's because it bridges the gap between power and simplicity in a way few others have attempted. This distro combines the best of Debian's rock-solid stability, Ubuntu's accessibility, Fedora's cutting-edge advancements, and a fresh vision for the future. But unlike traditional forks or spins of existing systems, it reimagines how Linux should behave for the modern user. It delivers a curated experience that feels familiar without compromising on the freedom and flexibility that open-source champions. One of the central pillars of this distro is its modular software delivery system. On the surface, Users see a clean and organized software center where applications are categorized clearly. Productivity, media, development, games, utilities, education, and so on. Each application listing includes multiple formats when applicable. Native packages, containerized versions, and even sandbox builds. But users don't need to understand the differences. The distro intelligently chooses the best format based on the user's machine, preferences, and performance considerations. This sounds simple, but it eliminates one of the biggest pain points for Linux newcomers. Security is another core focus. The distro uses proactive sandboxing and permission management, making it safe by default without isolating users from powerful functionality. Users can install apps knowing they won't suddenly expose their system to vulnerabilities. Updates are delivered over encrypted, signed channels, and each update is tested for compatibility with the most popular hardware configurations before wide release. If an update causes problems, the system automatically rolls back to the previous stable state without user intervention. But where this distro truly shines is in its user interface and workflow design. Unlike traditional desktops that mimic Windows or Mac OS, this one introduces its own refined approach to multitasking and workspace organization. It embraces concepts that power users love, tiling windows, workspaces that follow user intent, unified search, integrated notifications, while still feeling approachable to people switching from other operating systems. There's no steep learning curve. Instead, every design choice reflects real usage patterns observed from diverse user groups. Imagine logging into your computer in the morning. You're greeted with a dashboard showing your most used apps, recent files, upcoming calendar events, and quick actions for system tasks like connecting to networks or adjusting display settings. You start typing the name of a program or document and the search responds instantly, delivering results from local files, cloud storage, and even web search suggestions. Workspaces are fluid. You can drag windows from one to another, snap them into organized layouts with a gesture, and save workspace presets for common tasks like writing, coding, or video editing. Behind the scenes, the technical infrastructure supports real-time performance optimization. The system monitors resource usage and intelligently allocates CPU, memory, and I.O. to keep your workflow smooth. 
It doesn't throttle background tasks unnecessarily, but it also prevents resource hogging from slowing down your active work. The result is an experience that feels intuitive, almost like the OS anticipates your needs before you do. This is an area many current Linux distributions overlook, but in 2026, users won't settle for anything less. Compatibility with both legacy and modern hardware is also a highlight. Whether you're running on the latest ARM laptop, a high-end workstation with multiple GPUs, or an older Intel machine, the OS adjusts dynamically. Driver installation is automatic. Firmware updates happen securely in the background. Even peripherals like drawing tablets, VR headsets, and network cameras work without hunting for third-party drivers. On the software side, developers are flocking to this distro because it supports multiple tool chains out of the box. Containers, virtual environments, and language runtimes can be managed without frustrating version conflicts. Creative professionals appreciate deep integration with media frameworks that leverage GPU acceleration for encoding, effects, and rendering. Gamers love that Proton, Vulkan, and native titles run seamlessly. And the Software Center even features curated game recommendations with compatibility ratings. What about enterprise adoption? Many Linux distros struggle here because corporations require long-term support, predictable updates, and certified compatibility with business applications. The distro in question solves this by offering distinct release channels, a stable long-term support channel for conservative environments, and a rolling channel for those who want cutting-edge features. Businesses can manage fleets of machines with centralized policies for updates, security controls, and user access. Support contracts from recognized vendors provide peace of mind for organizations making the switch from proprietary systems. Another factor accelerating adoption is the growing emphasis on digital sovereignty. Governments and institutions are increasingly wary of lock-in to proprietary operating systems and cloud ecosystems. A truly open, transparent Linux distro that can be self-hosted, audited, and customized without legal encumbrances becomes very attractive. In response, public sectors in several countries are piloting transitions to Linux desktops, a move that could have a cascading effect on user, familiarity, and developer interest. But even with so many advantages, success is never guaranteed. There are challenges ahead. Legacy software that only runs on Windows or Mac OS will still hold some users back. Compatibility layers like Wine and virtualization help, but they aren't perfect. Some creative industries rely on tools that haven't fully matured on Linux. Gaming developers occasionally prioritize consoles and Windows first. These hurdles won't disappear overnight, but the gap is closing faster than ever before. Community perception is also critical. Linux has historically been associated with complexity. For decades, enthusiasts wore that as a badge of honor. It's hard because it's powerful. But in 2026, the narrative is changing. New users want power without pain. They want freedom without confusion. They want a community that welcomes them rather than overwhelms them with jargon. The distro poised to take over embraces this ethos. Its community spaces are organized, friendly, and focused on learning rather than gatekeeping. Documentation is clear, examples are relevant, and newcomers feel supported. So what does all this mean for you, the viewer, the user, the creator? It means we might be standing at a turning point in computing history. While Linux has quietly powered the world for decades, Soon it might finally be ready for mainstream desktop adoption, not through hype, but because it solves real problems that people care about. Switching operating systems isn't trivial. It's a commitment of time, effort, and trust. But when the benefits outweigh the friction, when performance feels better, security feels stronger, workflows feel smoother, and costs go down, people start to switch not because they have to, but because they want to. Imagine a world where students across the globe get laptops pre-installed with this Linux distro, where small businesses ditch expensive licenses, where creators share tutorials without apologizing that their tools only work on Windows, where children learn computing on systems that respect transparency and privacy. That world is closer than we think. The next big Linux OS won't be just another distribution. It will be a movement, a rediscovery of what computing can be when it's built for people, rather than locked behind corporate walled gardens. It will respect individual control without demanding technical mastery. It will be secure without being obscure. It will be powerful without being intimidating. So what's the name of this distro? How does it feel? What makes it special? That's the conversation we'll continue in the next video. But for now, understand this. 
2026 could mark a turning point for Linux on the desktop, not because of hype, but because the groundwork has finally been laid. Years of incremental improvements in hardware support, software availability, community engagement, and philosophical alignment between what users want and what open source can deliver have set the stage for something big. Really big. By the end of this year, millions of people might be asking the same question. Why didn't I switch sooner? And that more than anything else could be the catalyst that finally brings Linux into the mainstream where it's been destined to belong. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the future of Linux, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments, what do you think will be the next big Linux OS in 2026?